So I have an idea that I want to share with you on some scripture journaling. And it's based off of worship music. And all of the songs that I'll be doing today are Elevation Worship. I just love their music. And the lines that I'm going to use for the first set of scripture um, are the last part of the song. For the one who gave me life, nothing is a sacrifice. Use me how you want to, God. Have your throne within my heart. And this just makes me think of God using us for his glory. And I'm going to journal scriptures around that and talk about it a little bit. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's not even showing up on camera how I see it in real life. It's very neon in real life. On camera it doesn't even doesn't even show its beauty. <laughs> So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. So now that I've written the lyrics of the song and some scriptures to accompany it, let's talk about how we can use this to change our hearts and draw closer to the Lord. I'm going to use the uh, coordinating color of the scripture to take notes on the bottom of the page. For we are his workmanship. So we were created to serve God. We weren't created to serve our own purpose. Sometimes we get caught up in thinking about what we want and our needs. And, you know, if you're feeling like stuck or unhappy, maybe you have to take a look at your heart posture. Are you living for God? Are you living to do things for others and putting the needs of others first? Or are you thinking about yourself and are you thinking about rather than appreciating and having gratitude for what God has given you, um, kind of grumbling and feeling ungrateful and unhappy with what you do have? 
we are created for him. We are not created for our own pleasures. We're not created to, you know, live a life of 100% absolute comfort. It's just not what we were created to do. The next verse that I'm going to look at is a powerful one. It's Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said this after his death and he had resurrected. Before he went into heaven, the 11 disciples, they went into Galilee in verse 16 and they saw him and they worshiped him and the word says some doubted and right after that you know they're seeing jesus right um he had, they saw him die and now they're seeing him you know resurrected and this is what jesus says to them he says therefore go you you have all the authority in heaven and on earth because of me and that's in verse 18 then he says therefore go and make disciples of all nations. You have all the authority, right? That is amazing, wonderful authority of our heavenly father who created this universe. And what does he want us to do with that? Go and, you know, share the word with others. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and the Holy Spirit. And then verse 20 goes on to say, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So we are called to go and make disciples, but Jesus, he's so comforting, right? God is the comforter. And he says, <clears throat> Jesus says, you know, he's commanding us to go, but he is with us. So he's not wanting us to go out on our own, by our own mission and our own strength, but we have the Holy Spirit with us. And then the last one, you know, it's telling us, so flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. And the first thing I noticed was a lot of twos, 2 Timothy 2.22. So according to Google and what I searched, the number two could either mean union which is wonderful, or it can mean separation or division. It all depends on the context. And that really makes sense for the context of this scripture. Paul is talking to Timothy here, and in verse 22, he's talking about, you know, flee youthful um, passions. And if you think about young people, 20s, um, younger, even younger than me in their 20s or even teens, youthful passions. So Young people typically make decisions that are not so wise and so compromising purity, certainly. Desires of the flesh, you know, drinking and partying and things that you think are worthwhile, your social media following, but at the end of the day, it means nothing, truly. And if you are young, you are in your 20s or if you're a teenager, you don't have to live like that. You really don't, and actually, Living a life that is different from what is, you know, being described as youthful passions, I commend you, you know, if you're living a life that is for God. 
you're not indulging in the things of the youth, but you look different. Your life looks different. And when you look so different in a world that where everyone's trying to look the same, if you know what I mean, you stand out and you stand out for God. And then when someone, I just realized my camera cut off, but I hope, you know, I was, but I was basically saying when someone sees that you live differently, you can share God's love with them. I love this exercise because next time I sing this worship song, I can think about these scriptures that I journaled about and studied, and I can really worship with this scripture on my mind and on my heart. And to me, it just adds an even cooler element to worship and listening to worship music as I, you know, even read, reading through this page and listening to the song at the same time. So please let me know if you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful to you at all. I post a new Bible study video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I can't wait to study the Bible with you again. Bye.